It wasn't a loss in badminton that changed my arrogant and self-centered mindset to do everything for myself. So when I was in elementary school, I played basketball with my friends, like most children probably do. We must have really liked it because we found ourselves playing with this orange ball every single day. Or we had nothing else better to do, which was probably also the case. Anyways, I very quickly realized that this sport had built an inseparable connection between me and my friends, since we laughed together, coached each other, and had unrivaled teamwork. Yep, that was until the coronavirus pandemic, which broke that connection. Darn, I forgot the government could do that. And so my once treasured sport was stripped away from me and brought to a complete halt. And I'm sure that many of you can relate. Now, here, my parents and I both learned that keeping me indoors was like throwing a can of hot soda in a hot oven. I was desperate for exercise, so I reluctantly turned to badminton, a sport that I once belittled as a mere gym class sport that lacked the excitement of collaborating with teammates. I mean, who wanted to play a sport where veteran players would literally make fun of newer ones by pretending a coming shot was in swinging at it and deliberately missing because it was blatantly out. Still, I decided to give it a try and a while later I realized, wait, wow, I'm actually quite good at this. COVID-19 and lots of training had opened up a window of opportunity for me to excel. This was so cool. I was about to get so much clout. However, my skill growth came alongside confidence and arrogance. It was like I had never heard the word humble before. Anyways, in the next year or so, I had won practically everything my junior high school had to offer in the sport. I was MVP and won nearly every school-related badminton match for two years straight. But that did not mean I was good at everything because I still sucked at table tennis. In this unusual time, I later became ranked first in Alberta and 11th in Canada. Okay, wait, 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 so I was the best, right? Well, during these years, I certainly thought so, as I bragged about achievements to classmates and utterly destroyed my friends, even when we played for fun. 21 to zero. Plus, due to badminton's unique seating system similar to tennis, I often played weaker opponents first, which only fueled my overconfidence. Yet, as time went on, Despite my achievements, the underwhelming popularity of badminton in Canada meant that I never got the recognition I thought I was gonna get. I was in shambles after realizing that nobody would come up to me in the middle of the hallway and say, wow, you're that badminton player I heard about. Can I get your autograph? Because of this, I often felt bored of the sport at times. Now, the worst of it came during a practice match at school when I was playing a friend I knew from the basketball team. He was someone I knew I could easily destroy. Yeah, I'm gonna demolish him and he's gonna worship me. Yeah, that sounds like a foil-proof plan of getting people to notice me and finally compliment me again. I knew I wasn't being the best friend, but it was necessary. Who cared about our past connections when I could get all this fame and glory just to myself? And so, the game started, and as expected, I was leading effortlessly. Once in a while, when he hit a shot that I knew that was going out, I swung at it and I deliberately missed. Look at him, he really thought I was gonna hit that. Ironic, right? But I could do these trick shots all day, and I won. However, after the match, as I awaited my much needed fame and glory, to my surprise, everyone surrounded my opponent, exclaiming, wow, you played so well against him. You've improved so much. And there I was standing, only getting praise from my coach, who said, keep it up, Alex, but uh, try to hit less of those trick shots next time. Ironically, my plan had backfired, and my opponent was getting more recognition than me. Little Alex was not happy, and that same feeling of boredom struck again. I felt extremely underwhelmed by these events, angered even. 
Why did everyone want to be like my friend? And more importantly, why wasn't badminton fun anymore? When I got home, I sat on my bed, eyeing my medals down one by one, as if they were something alien to me. Even though I'd won, I felt lost. Why wasn't my opponent angry that he had lost? It almost seemed like all my daily satisfaction came from beating everyone. And when this got boring, so did the sport itself. Then, an old basketball participation medal caught my eye. Like a flashback, I remembered that basketball was a time where I played with friends for fun, driven by the sheer excitement of playing and learning with each other. It was different from badminton. The realization hit me hard. My interest in the sport was driven by a desire for recognition rather than seeking genuine growth through building meaningful relationships. I lacked connection and sportsmanship with friends and teammates. And I had forgotten that joy and growth often came through other people's help. I was tired of my discontent. I knew I needed a change. And so I tried incorporating elements from my old basketball training into badminton. I asked my coach to include more partner drills and competition style games that focused on pushing my teammates and I to be more teamwork oriented and goal driven. We played team events where we'd often have to coach each other to maximize every single team member's chance of winning. It wasn't just me that had to contribute. Everybody had a role. This made training sessions more lively and I learned new tactics, some of which I had not even known about before. Plus, I decided to set different goals. Rather than chasing titles, my goal now was to try to enjoy the game and focus on overcoming personal challenges. For example, I wanted to perfect this complex backhand shot, not because it would guarantee me wins, but because it brought a sense of accomplishment, just like pulling off a difficult basketball move once did. My friends and I often stayed after training to practice these personal goals, and I realized that people often like to see your improvement over your raw skill. Today, in 10th grade, I have consciously changed my mindset. I congratulate opponents on good shots, just like the good old days of elementary school basketball. This has not only made the game more enjoyable, but helped alleviate some of that tournament anxiety I once had, because I always expected myself to win. The new skills I learned have cured my boredom and put me ahead of the pack. I also teach my friends how to get better whenever we go to the recreation center to play now rather than beating them 21 to 0 like I used to. My support and coaching have drastically improved their skills, with some even making the school badminton team. And this has enhanced my own leadership abilities too. Nonetheless, my friends pay me back by constantly feeding me shuttles after practice, and comparing how I play now to how I used to play is a way I remind myself and constantly track this powerful mindset. You can try it too. It is about connections after all. That's what makes sports so fun. Others empower you to grow and learn. Oftentimes, this can be applied to other sports arts and fields and can not only transform the way we perform, but the way we experience life as a whole. For example, while good grades are important kids, teachers now see group work as a catalyst for learning too. In this world where society and social media constantly pressure us, our community, especially youth, has to remember that success is not always measured by the number of trophies or medals we collect. Sure, these can be bonuses, but you don't have to be that player that always brags about how easy their game was, or in badminton terms, how they bagel their opponent, which just essentially means winning 21 to 0 in two straight sets. Fixating on these trivial matters may cause us to lose our modesty, our teamwork, and our own satisfaction. And so I leave you on one final note. Whether it's learning a new skill, overcoming a personal challenge, or simply enjoying the process, these are the moments that you should cherish. After all, badminton's a lot more fun when you don't have to go around chasing your own shuttle all the time, right? Thank you.